Welcome back, explorers to the ninth episode of Project Solara. Today, we set our sights on the open plains, vast landscapes sculpted by a cooling Verdantara. Millions of years after the Pyronova eruption, continents shifted, once vast wetlands receded, and new ecological niches opened up. Let's witness the remarkable creatures that evolved on these steppes and savannas. After the Pyronova eruption the planet's temperature skyrocketed allowing for worldwide swamps to form. But as the newly evolved plants consume greenhouse gases the planet's temperature lowered. This allows for the formation of the open plains. Another important event to address is the movement of the continents. At this point, we are about 975 million years into the 4.5 billion year timeline of Verdantara. It is at this time that the continents make a major shift. The continents of Xyrophilios and Xyranthia move closer together, while the islands around the continents also shift. As the temperature continues to fall a relative of the Tundophyta adapts to survive. All pteraphytes exhibit a main plant body, and a central meristem where the leaves originate. If the meristem is damaged whether by being eaten or some other cause, it will not be able to grow back. Therefore, an offshoot of the Tundophyta might simply position its main body and meristem underground. With only its leaves above the surface. These innovative pteraphytes will be called the Volvophyta. As the Volvophyta spread across the continent they create an entirely new environment, which we'll call the Volvophyta steppe. As the Volvophyta grow in abundance the Triglopodia may begin to feed on them. This may lead to one branch of the Triglopodia becoming dedicated browsers similar to the elephants and giraffes of our world, feeding on the leaves that are too high for others to reach. They will use their robust tails as a form of stabilization when reaching for food. These new forms may not be found in the steppe, but they will live in abundance in and near patches of trees, such as gallery forests, we will call these titanic forms the Cirripodia, and they will grow to be up to 10 feet tall, and live for up to 12 years. Relatives of the Cirripodia may instead opt to become dedicated grazers, mainly feeding on the Volvophyta. Since they won't have to reach up for food, they will have much shorter legs. These creatures, which we will call Fidelopodia, can grow to be up to 6 feet tall and live for up to 10 years. The Cirripodia and Fidelopodia will serve as the first true megafauna on Verdantara, and with the Volvophyta steppe supporting such massive herbivores it is inevitable that the first true apex predator will evolve. Relatives of the Fidelopodia, these creatures have adapted to a predatory lifestyle. The main reason that an apex predator hadn't yet evolved was because the single pair of legs common to all descendants of the Serpentopodia, weren't yet capable enough to harbor a truly apex predator. Therefore, these new forms will need to make a few key adaptations. If these predators are to have the energy to hunt, they will need to have a high enough body temperature. Therefore these creatures may evolve a form of thermoregulation. Thermoregulation is the ability to adjust internal body temperature to keep it in a metabolically favorable range. However, it may not be beneficial for these creatures to keep a constantly high body temperature. Therefore, these creatures may only regulate their body temperature during hunts corresponding with their level of activity. This form of thermoregulation is very similar to facultative endothermy, which is when an organism only regulates its temperature under certain conditions. Another adaptation these creatures may undergo is modification of the foot structure. Plantigrade walkers keep the entire foot on the ground including the heel of the foot. On the other foot we have digitigrade walkers, which walk on their toes with the heel raised off the ground, while ungulagrade walkers stand on the very tips of their toes. These creatures may favor digitigrade walking and will therefore walk on their toes increasing their speed greatly. All these adaptations combined will allow these predators which we'll call the gymnopeds, to become the apex predator of the steppe growing up to 5 feet tall and live for around 8 years. With the newly evolved gymnopeds now prowling the plains, they will surely leave many corpses which descendants of the rinkopards may adapt to feed on. Carrion is a rich food source to supplement these creatures' diet, therefore they will help keep the steppe clean. It is common for scavengers to have a highly developed sense of smell. This may lead to the evolution of scent receptors that will line these creatures' breathing cavities. 
To help them rip into bodies these creatures' feet may evolve to be wider with a large spike at the end. These adaptations will allow these creatures, which we'll call the Cinterdance, to proliferate in the steppe. Now we turn to the newly formed plains of Xyranthia. Direct descendants of the Cladophyte will fill the role of low-growing plant on Xyranthia, with large leaves sticking out from the ground and most of the body underground. However, these Terrophytes will position their Gamatangia on stalks that poke out of the ground. We will call this clade the Cortophyta, and they will grow in fast fields across Xyranthia. As the Cortophyta steppe continue to spread descendants of the Aquila Tundus will evolve to fill the megafaunal niches on Xyranthia, but before they can do this they will need to adapt. The Aquila Tundus exhibited a sprawling limb posture which is not very suitable for creatures of larger sizes. Instead, these new creatures may opt for an erect limb posture, which is typically seen with large animals on Earth. These creatures will be able to support larger sizes than the megafauna on Xyrophilios, growing up to 12 feet tall and living up to 15 years, we will call this form the dentropod. As the dentropod proliferate another offshoot of the Aquila Tundus evolves for cursorial locomotion. Cursorial locomotion is high speed or long distance running. Yet again these creatures will undergo a shift in posture evolving an erect posture. Cursorial locomotion is made more efficient by increasing stride length which is the distance between footfalls. One way to do this is to evolve longer limbs which we will see in this new creature. Another way to increase stride length is to adjust the way the creature walks. These forms may exhibit digitigrade walking, walking on their toes when running. Cursoriality benefits from a long flexible body as seen in cheetahs, so these organisms will evolve a longer more flexible body. All these adaptations combined will allow these creatures to be the fastest on the step. These forms can grow up to 3 feet tall and live for up to 7 years, we will call them the Natharios. With the Cortophyta plains supporting so many herbivores there is bound to be a predator to hunt them. Before the climate began changing the top predator on Xyranthia was the Consergia, but as the swamps retreat there won't be enough plant coverage to support their ambush hunting. Therefore a new clade of predators descended from the Consergia will evolve to become the ultimate steppe predator. Similarly to the gymnopeds these creatures will have periods of high and low activity, allowing them to be far more effective pursuit hunters. They are armed with a sharp beak and claws at the end of their toes on their front feet. All these adaptations combined allow these organisms, which we'll call the proviopards, to hunt even the largest of prey. They can grow up to 6 feet tall and live for up to 10 years. An offshoot from the proviopards may adapt to become generalists. These creatures may adapt their gut to support a wider variety of foods and their beak will become more powerful. Since it split off from the evolutionary path that gave rise to the proviopards it will inherit their claws. However this clade may use them for a different purpose. These creatures will supplement their diet with carrion. They will use their claws to rip open bodies and their beaks to crush bone. These forms could be considered mesocarnivores which are creatures that get only around 50% of their nutrition from meat. We will call these adaptable creatures the scantapelma, they will grow up to 4 feet tall and live for up to 7 years. Unfortunately, due to its relatively diminutive size and proximity to the equator, the island continent of Xyracor finds itself unable to support the vast expanses of open steppe that have flourished on larger, landmasses like Xyrophilios and Xyranthia. From the towering Cyropodia to the swift Natharios, the open steppes of Verdantara host a tapestry of life shaped by resilience and adaptation. Join us in the next episode as we explore the effects of shifting continents, unraveling new biomes, and the continued evolution of this captivating world. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts. Your questions and ideas might shape the future of our explorations. Together, we'll unlock the secrets of this mesmerizing world, one discovery at a time.